Hey guys, what's up and welcome to the Phil Studio. Today is a great day because I'm going to attempt to repair my Zoom H4n. Though it's a discontinued product, I think it's worth a shot uh, opening the opening device and trying to repair it. And I hope you enjoy the process. I'll show you how to safely open the case and how to not damage your Zoom H4n while opening it. So enjoy! The first thing we have here is um, see how the right jack won't fit totally inside the, the, the connector versus the left one which fits nicely. So I felt like something was stuck in the back but it, it's not really the case, something may be damaged inside. And the other issue I have is the headphone jack which is probably a thing most of the users of the Zoom H4n will experience at some point in their life. Uh, this Zoom is 10 years old, so it's seen better days. It's not the first time I opened my Zoom. Back in the days, the power switch broke. The, the tiny pl plastic tab that allows it to part on just broke, so I had to turn on the device with a toothpick. Uh, it worked for a while, but one day I decided to replace the old power switch. It was fairly easy and now this switch is working fine so today it's the second time opening the zoom and if you're careful and methodical you should be good to do it yourself. First step you have two screws on the top part where the mic is located, remove them. Then you will see two rubber tab just under, remove them as well, under are two other screws. To remove the lower part screws, I suggest you use a, a slim Phillips screwdriver to access the two screws and remove them both. So, and finally you have one rubber tab that I forgot about in which is located in the middle just below the battery case. Remove the tab and the screw. So in total you have removed two screws for the mic section on the top gray area and five for the old back casing. Now you'll need to be really gentle for this part. Use a small flathead screwdriver and apply a small amount of pressure on both sides. Uh, right in the middle there are two security plastic tabs and, and don't go too hard or you'll damage them and this should allow you to just open the back cover and be careful when you remove the back cover, unplug the tiny battery connector, red and black wire, as well as the piezo connector, which is the yellow and blue wire. So this will allow you to work freely. Uh, the combo jack board is retained in place, still by a small connector. It's fairly easy to remove that board. Uh, you don't need to wiggle like I did. Also, make sure you remove the small two-pin connector to work freely if you need to. So I tried the connector again, still something is stuck or it, it just doesn't fit well. Uh, unfortunately I felt like this wasn't really something I could repair easily. And, and I was right, there's a lot of copper foil soldered to the board as well as glued around the barrel connectors, acting as, as a shield. Uh, after some investigation I realized it would be kind of tough to just unsolder the whole XLR plug and replace it without messing up all the shielding and the small circuit that is just every uh, near the, the, the pin of the XLR connector. So you'll see more on that later since I, I'll google the, re the replacement board. So now if you want to access the headphone jack, this is where the layered PCB burger fun starts. You'll need to gently remove this top board. Again, apply a few pressure on the with a flat head screwdriver. Please be gentle and it should kind of pop or just unconnect from the other board and it should be easy to remove. So once removed, you'll see we're not done with the screw. Uh, we need to remove the old microphone assembly part. Um, 
There are two screws on the top, kind of hidden, but fairly easy to remove. And when you're done with these screws, you should be able to remove the top of the assembly, of the gray assembly. Under is another set of screws, remove them and be really careful since this board, the old assembly of the microphone, is connected with a tiny ribbon connector or a tiny ribbon cable. Make sure you carefully unplug it by unsecuring two tabs on the side of the connector uh, as well as the other two pin connector. Now you should be able to just slide the mic assembly out of the casing. Meanwhile, you see me remove the SD card. It will ease the process later. Uh, and one of the, the gray screws was stuck, so I got it out with my magnet. Here's another tricky part. If you want to remove the first PCB, you'll need to kind of slide one side first since there's some plastic tab on the casing which are holding the PCB in, in, in place so don't apply strength uh, use your brain and your eyes to see where the board is stuck you'll see those small pin and you should be able to just like kind of slide it on on the one side first and the other side after and the two boards are sandwiched together and connected via two small pressure connector which connects the two board together so don't twist the board while removing it to unplug J just push it up or pull it up to avoid damaging the connector now you'll see me use a dollar store 1 8 inch connector or the headphone jack to test the continuity between um, the, the the soldering pin as well as the, the jack and make sure which solder joint or pin on the headphone jack needs repair or is not working properly but unfortunately after a while of testing I realized the ground connection was intermittent so when I move the jack inside the connector it will sometimes make connection and sometimes not so I decided I could simply redo the solder joint and do all of the six pin while I was there. So that's what I am doing there. And sadly, after doing so and testing back the continuity, I zoomed in and I realized the plastic casing of the connector itself was, was kind of cracked or damaged and it would probably be best to replace the old jack connector. So it happens. Sometimes you want to repair stuff, but they aren't really meant to be repaired or so you end up in the sad reality of the repair world. Sometimes you need to replace parts. So I have a whole input PCB and a headphone connector to replace on my Zoom and it should not cost too much to order, but let me explain what I found uh, after searching for replacement part i found that one website ooh, that one website because i visited many others and uh, yeah just found that one would sold them for a reasonable price but unfortunately as you know the zoom is more than probably more oh, it's, it's probably older than 10 years old so the zoom h4n is a discontinued product and this site sells part from old zoom and and these parts are in a really limited quantity which i fully understand so the xlr pcb is out of stock for now and after checking the headphone the headphone jack is in stock but it, it costs six euro which is kind of expensive considering i live in canada so do i really want to have this tiny part ship in boat from europe and pay the shipping fees plus the six euro and I feel like maybe it's not the best way to to do so I'm not sure the, the zoom uh, h4n has given me lots of year of fun and it, it has served me well for all these years I feel like I can endure these little flaws for for a while um, since I don't use that much the headphone jack but though these, um, the problem with the right connector has caused me many issues, 
especially when I was in Niagara Falls testing my new microphone device that I designed. Um, so I guess at some point I'll have to buy a new field recording device, which is kind of sad. Uh, I'll let you watch the speed up process of closing back the device. Make sure you don't forget all the connectors and screws if there's something that you want me to explain better uh, for the, the, the closing part of the device just let me know in the comment and the motto is if you need to use force you're probably going to break it <laughs> so here's a little thought as a repair tech i need to think about my role in this world it's nice being able to repair most things from electronic devices to home appliance to electronic toys and audio devices but at some point I I also need to know when a repair is worth it and when it's not worth it. So it's so rare that I won't that it won't be worth it because this is my personal device so I really want it to be repaired and fully functional. But now I feel like replacing this XLR combo plug is just an occasion to to risk and damage the board a bit more. Um but for the small jacket phone, I'm pretty sure I can find the right spec and measurement and find a replacement in one of a local store near my house or even in my country or I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure I can find that. So let me know in the comment if you attempted to repair your old Zoom H4n or any other device that is discontinued and, and where... Uh, are you willing to go to repair something? So, uh, see you. Son, how do you push stop on that?